Until the 19th century, power meant muscle, the wheel, wind and water. Then, in Britain, a new force was prized from nature. The power of steam. We may justly look upon the steam engine as the noblest machine ever invented by man. The pride of the machinist, the admiration of the philosopher. Engineers and inventors became heroes. The buildings housing the machinery were like temples to the new age. The early engines, some the size of a three-story house, were used to pump surplus water from mines and drinking water from rivers. Every steam engineer's ambition was to achieve locomotion. The first to succeed was Richard Trevithick. In 1804, he won a bet that his machine could carry 10 tons of iron along nine miles of a Welsh tramway. A local paper reported, Mr. Trevithick's new invented steam engine was found to perform to admiration. It is not doubted the machine will be made use of in a thousand instances not yet thought of. The prophecy came true, but not yet for Trevithick. His engines were simply too heavy for the rails. At first, steam-powered transport worked best on water. In 1807, in the United States, the first commercial steamer was launched. The Clermont took 32 hours to ferry passengers 150 miles downriver from Albany to New York. Just 12 years later, paddle steamers were crossing the Atlantic Ocean. In Britain, Trevithick's invention was gradually perfected. In 1829, George Stevenson's rocket reached a speed of 35 miles an hour. A young girl described the journey. How strange it was to journey without any visible means of progress by the magical machine with its flying white breath and rhythmical, unvarying pace. When I closed my eyes, the sensation of flying was delightful. The romance of steam inspired art. J. M. W. Turner painted rain, steam and speed. The music of Felix Mendelssohn evoked the steamship journeys he took in Scotland. The first writers to describe the Atlantic crossing was Charles Dickens. We stared apprehensively into a long, narrow apartment, not unlike a giant hearse, over which a rack, fixed to the low roof and stuck full of drinking glasses, hinted dismally at rolling seas and heavy weather.
Soon, it became possible to communicate even under the sea, using another new force of nature, electricity. Instant messages could be sent over long distances along cables laid under the Atlantic by the first iron steamship. The ship's designer was a celebrity, the British people's hero engineer, Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Brunel's imagination overcame nature, bridging rivers and tunneling through hillsides. But his victories cost blood. 100 workers died digging two miles of tunnel between Bristol and London. By 1850, railways and steamship routes encircled the earth. Ships no longer depended on winds and ocean currents. The migration of peoples on a massive scale was now possible. Continents could be crossed in days rather than weeks. Travel made it essential to synchronize the world's clocks. The Greenwich Observatory in London was formally adopted as the Zero Meridian, the center of world time, and the rest of the world divided into 24 time zones. All this made possible the tourist timetables, compiled by the world's first travel agent. When building plans to make up a trip by railway, caravan or ship, what name is foremost on the lip? Thomas Cook and Son. An itinerant preacher, Thomas Cook started his business in 1841. Inspired by the new railways, he organized his first day return trip, a temperance affair involving a picnic, a brass band, and a sermon against the evils of drink. Within a few decades, he was selling three million tickets a year to destinations all around the world, creating one of the first multinational companies. Cook took workers to the seaside, middle-class holidaymakers to Europe, and the rich to every corner of the British Empire and the world.